Good evening, everyone. This is Dolores Cannon again with the Metaphysical Hour. And here we are, the first part of August, and this is the first live show we've done in a month. We were gone the entire month of July, so they were playing shows out of the archives the whole time that we were gone. But we've got a lot to tell you about all the places we went in the last month, and there was a lot of things happening. So that's what we're going to focus on tonight. But let me give you the toll-free number if anybody wants to call in, because you're welcome to do it. This is just an open mic night, I guess. <laughs> uh, open mic? Oh, we can do stand-up? <laughs> <laughs> so that we can answer questions, too, because we're just going to be going over the things that happen. We were all over the whole United States, so that's a lot to do in a month's time. Okay, the toll-free number, in case anyone wants to call in, is 1-888-815-9756. 888-815-9756. And, uh, okay, I guess we have to start at the beginning. Okay. we got to go back a whole month. Because it began with the 4th of July weekend. Right. And um, we were at uh, James Gilliland's uh, UFO conference in Washington State. We had to fly into Portland, Oregon, and they drove us down. It's a really beautiful oh. country oh, out there. very beautiful, gorgeous country. Mm-hmm. But there's snow-capped mountains and everything. Mm-hmm. Right. And, in fact, it was cold. <laughs> I know several places we went were kind of cool, but that one was cold, yes, when we were doing the sky watching. Uh-huh. <laughs> so. But uh, we went to the conference. We couldn't stay for the whole thing because we had to get back because of all the other traveling we had to do. But it was interesting. It was out on the ranch. And, uh, well, we kind of said it kind of reminded you of Woodstock, except without all the bad qualities of Woodstock. No, it was very natural and very, it's out in the country, you know, and back to nature and everybody, had, you know, they had tents and, and um, they had about three or four hundred people, and a lot of them pitched little tents uh-huh, all right. over this whole field. Right. And uh, there was a lot of enthusiasm. There were a lot of young people right. there. Mm-hmm. But a lot of the speakers I've known because we have been with them before, and I've had them on my show. But uh, it was interesting the night they had the sky watch mm-hmm. yeah. that we set out there, and it was kind of cold that night. Everybody is sitting out in this field and waiting for the sun to go down so they could look for UFOs. And it was interesting. They had all of these people, the young ones, they were out in the middle of the field, Mm -hmm. and they were in a circle. Right, calling them in. (laughs) Chanting, (laughs) chanting and calling the UFOs in. They wanted to see them, so everybody was all excited about it. And uh, the sun went down, and you Mm -hmm. had to see this beautiful sky with all the stars, and, of course, every time somebody would see a light move, they'd say, there's one, there's one. Mm-hmm. And a lot of it was airplanes. Right, right. There were some strange there lights. Were, there were a couple of lights that we couldn't, two or three lights we could not explain. And um, to me, what was profound, I mean, well, well you saw that one, that, yeah, that light. Yeah, tell I, about yeah, that. Go ahead and explain that, and then I'll talk about, like, what I was getting, because that's, I think that's, very much where we're going. Everybody keeps looking at it with their eyes, and that's not necessarily what it's going to be. So It's another part of our, yeah. what do you want to call it, the brain or another part of our psyche that we're going right. to be using. Right. But, yeah, everybody was watching the sky, and uh, Julie was talking about airplanes. We could see airplanes going across. But then this one part of the sky I was watching, all of a sudden I just saw this big flash. It was like a flash bulb, way bigger than a star. It just flashed on. And she was looking somewhere else, and she said, oh, that's a, a plane. And I said, that was not a plane. Mm-hmm. And she didn't see what I saw. Nope. I don't think the ones around us saw it either. No, and I wasn't looking enough in another direction that I would have that I would have missed it entirely. I mean, I wasn't looking enough in that direction where I should have been able to see it. Yeah, so, but it that was, was for you. It was just mm-hmm. like a flash bulb went off, and it was big. And then I kept watching that part of the sky again for to do it again. If it was a plane, or it mm-hmm. couldn't have been a plane. It was too big anyway. But then we never saw any more after mm-hmm. that on that part of the sky. But Julie was picking up things more psychically, I think. Right. I kept over my right shoulder, and I have no idea what direction that was in the sky. I don't. We were know. facing toward Mount Adams with the snow. Yeah. That was in the yeah. background. Yeah. Who knows? I think it was the other direction, but um. 
I kept feeling them. I could feel them. And it was like this one spot. It was like, and there was a clouds even had a formation up there. I was like, or like there were any clouds. There was something up there. And I, maybe that's what it was. It was a vortex kind of feeling to it. It had a portal feeling to it. And it's like, they're, they're going to come through there. I mean, it was just, I could feel them there. <laughs> and, um, and then I was just trying to talk, you know, communicate something. It's like, when, yeah. you know, can I see you and stuff? And they're like, they were just saying, look with your heart. And so I'm like, okay, how do I look with my heart? <laughs> so, uh, and and then I think not too long after that, I heard James out in the field saying, telling them something about open your heart and stuff. And I thought that was interesting that he was saying that. But because um, they were all chanting and you know, right? Calling. He was just saying, open your heart to receive them. And and they were telling me, look with your heart. And um, um, and then I think you were getting cold and stuff. It, it was enough. It was like it wasn't going to happen. I could feel it wasn't going to happen for me that night, but I, I could feel them there. Well, then the next day when William Henry was giving his talk, well, when James Gilliland was introducing him, he was talking about they had been out doing some sky watching years ago. Yeah. And he made a comment, something about he was James was asking William if he saw them, and William was like, saw, see them? I can feel them. They're here. And I'm like, Okay, well, that was exactly what I I could feel them. I knew where they were. I I mean, it's like, and I kept asking, you know, how can I see you? What? And it was like you have, you've got to get this interdimensional vision. Was what I was hearing, and but I also heard right behind that is it's not very far to come. I mean, it's not going to be very long down the road to to be able to do that. So that's what I was thinking. Mm-hmm. It has to do with dimensions. Yeah, it's seeing interdimensionally. So, you know, I've had many mm-hmm. cases like that, too, where people will see something and somebody else in the same spot mm-hmm. won't see anything, mm-hmm. and it'd be a huge crap. Sometimes it's a very individual thing, a very personal thing. Mm-hmm. But uh, that's probably what it is that well, has to do like with Well, that's like what Blair dimensions. was getting at the can- Grand Canyon, but well, we're we'll get, get to that. To that. Yeah. Too. Okay. <laughs> All right. So, to be done later. <laughs> okay, we're going to get to it tonight. Mm-hmm. So anyway, when we got done, we had to drive in the middle of the night back to Portland because we got to get a plane the next day. We couldn't stay for the whole conference because we had to get ready for our tour. We were having the Awakening Tour. And if you remember, I've had Blair Styra on the show before. He is the most renowned um, psychic channeler in New Zealand yeah, who channels uh, to Bosch. And we uh, brought him over here for our conference we did in June. And he was here all that time. He was Mm -hmm. here a total of two months before he just now went back. Mm -hmm. But after our conference, he went back to L.A. and was going to join up with us after we came back from the uh, James Gilliland conference. So he joined us in Chicago on our way for the first leg of the trip. This was just the next right. week. Mm-hmm. The first leg of the trip, we were going to go to Boston and then up to um, Nashua? Nashua, New Hampshire. New Hampshire mm-hmm. and Ashgrove. Andover, Massachusetts. Andover. Where did I get Ashgrove? <laughs> she didn't know where she was. I didn't. But I'll tell you this whole month. We just month, said, come on, follow us. <laughs> this whole month, I have no, had no idea where I am. I've just been wandering around the whole month. People saw me somewhere, I guess. <laughs> but we flew into Boston. Okay, we got you there. <laughs> <laughs> and then we, uh, and so Blair was with us by that time, and that was the first leg of the trip. And on our awakening tour, we were doing a joint lecture series. I was lecturing, and then the first half, part, the first hour, mm-hmm. hour and a half, mm-hmm. and then he would do his uh, channeling where he goes into trance and has Tabash come through. Mm-hmm. And Tabash was intermingling with the audience, oh. and everybody just loved it. Oh, it was it. so precious. <laughs> I mean, oh, you if if you oh everybody out there, you have to experience Blair and Tabash. You just have to. You know, he has such wonderful information. Uh, for he has this tremendous mm-hmm. personality mm-hmm. too. Yeah. Whenever this entity comes through, mm-hmm. it's an entity that really cares about people, and he gives individual mm-hmm. messages. Right. So this whole uh, trip, too, he was doing uh, personal consultations with people, mm-hmm. too. But that was the first leg was in Boston area, and I don't think we had anything happen there. We were just starting out. <laughs> yeah, it was a very good um, group. Group. It was wonderful. Yeah, it was a wonderful way to start everything, yes. Yeah. We're mm-hmm. thinking of going back there and doing a class yeah, in right. that area. Next year, doing a class, another talk, and class, and Blair will be doing private reading. Okay. So. Mm-hmm. 
So Blair had not really seen a lot of the United States when he came over in June. He just saw L.A. area, and then he saw Arkansas. But, boy, believe me, he saw plenty of the United States on this trip. Yeah, he's got a much better idea. He knows how big it is, or a better idea how big it is. <laughs> That's what he said. He said, I don't understand this. Their people are so spread out. There's just too many people. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so we went to Boston, showed him the Pacific, the Atlantic Ocean. Mm -hmm. So then the next leg, we flew all the way across the United States to to L.A. And we had to do a, the next part was going to be in Ojai. Mm -hmm. California. Right. Now, a lot of this stuff looks good on paper you can get from here to there, but when you start doing it, it's not that easy. Oh, you love being the rock star. You know it. We were doing a rock star tour is what happened, so <laughs> on that kind of a schedule, a rock star schedule. <laughs> that's what she called it. It meant just go, go, go with no sleep and constant being <laughs> one place to the other. But we got to L.A. We had to do a car mm -hmm. to get to Ojai. You can't just fly in there. And, of course, ran into traffic. It took almost three hours just to make that drive. Mm -hmm. But he said one of the reasons he wanted us to do these places, the one who set it up, was that these were vortexes. Well, they were also um, different kind of places, but, yes, they were vortexes. Um, Ojai, Mount Shasta, and Sedona were all vortexes. And that's where we went on this place. And, boy, did we feel them. I mean, that was, I was excited about that. I wanted to Well, when we, we got to Ojai, um, Julie and Blair went out, and they were able to feel. It was a place called Meditation Mount, mm -hmm. just out right there yeah, on the edge of Ohio. Yeah, apparently there are several around there. But uh, the bookstore, she just said, well, there's several, and she gets to start and tell us where they were. Well, she just said Meditation Mount, and we looked at each other and were like, that's where we got to go. We just knew, and that's where we went. That was the only one we went and visited. <laughs> so, yeah, well, you said the place they had marked off to meditate was not the place. Oh, that was a message I got when I was going up there. I was getting all kinds of stuff. But, um, uh, but what I got was where they are telling you it is is not where it is. And, um, and sure, I mean, that was probably what it was talking about was, they had a meditation room, and and it was locked. So it was like, well, you couldn't use it anyway. But that, and that was right in the middle of this complex of buildings. Well, then they had a trail that walked off, but that also had chairs along it where you could sit down and uh, and any yeah, of those places. Okay. But that's where uh, we went out there, and that's where you could feel it. It was like there was stuff, and the mountains around there were talking to me, and it was just like there's something over there. There, you know, there's just oh, it was it was major major stuff. There. Well, if you know, oh. Julie is very sensitive to energies, and Blair was, too. Uh -huh. <laughs> so the, the two of them combined, they mm -hmm. were having a powerful experience. Mm -hmm. if you Really, you said you felt it throughout your body when mm -hmm. you got up to that part. Oh, yeah. Oh, it was um, it was waves of energy, and um, uh, I, I got very emotional even, and um, it was like I'm remembering, um, you know, being there before, and, uh, and it plus was just, like I said, the mountains, there was these rocks in the mountains, and it just kept telling me those are markers. I mean, I really don't, lot, some of it doesn't make any sense, and I, and I kept getting a feeling of home. And when you look around there, it's like, it's not a place that you might necessarily call home. <laughs> it's just, um, mm -hmm. it's gorgeous, but it's different. And um, But I just kept getting a sense of home. And and that's what a lot of a lot of the things were coming to me were saying. Um, it was a home from long, long ago, and um, mm -hmm. uh, that's the feeling Blair yeah, got too. They were very familiar with it. Yes, yes, uh huh. And um, so we did our talk there, and you know the same talks we did. It was like repeat. See, for me, it's the same thing. I just got to remember what I said. With Blair, it's always different. Right. He right. goes off into La La Land. He well, goes working. Now, he works when he's in La La Land. So, he says you know. he's off doing work. Mm -hmm. And then while he's doing that, Tabash takes over his body. And, and so he never knows what he's going to say. So right. every time it's going to be something different. Right. right. And we do have uh, CDs. Yes. That well, we're we're, going... we're, yes. We, we did record them. And I think the sound is good enough where we can we can uh, put them out there. So, um, so we're going to put, like, this is a uh, variety of different talks mm -hmm. because each one is a little different. Mm -hmm. You never know what Tabash is going to do. No, but there was, um, at least in the first four, 
there was a similar thread of, of this one message, because I think it took that many times to get through my head, Yeah. because I finally got it. And I'd like to address that here a little bit later after we go through the other things. I'd like to address what his message was that was just profound. Mm-hmm. Um uh, and it, it's like the secret. <laughs> you know, I, when I really got it, I'm like, oh, my God, this is it. This is it. So I, I want to share that little but, suspense there to be continued. <laughs> but I think a lot of it depended on the audience. Each audience was a little different. And mm-hmm. so this made his his contribution, right. his talk, a little different. Right. So anyway, after that, we had to get up to Mount Shasta. That was the hardest part of the trip. <laughs> Because you can't fly there, and you certainly can't drive. It's too far. So when I, I was setting up the flights, the only way to get there from down where we were, we had to go back to LAX, and then you had to fly Ameri- um, Alaska Airlines to Redding, the closest we could get, Redding, California. Then we had to rent a car to get over to Mount Shasta. And I didn't like the schedule at all because we had to get there and do the talk that night when we got there. So, we pull in there. Believe me, I kept hearing about it. <laughs> well, yeah, but it was, it needed, that night in order to, we, because it took three hours to drive from LAX, we decided to leave at the, before the crack of dawn, four, three o'clock in the morning, mm-hmm. to get back to LAX and beat all the traffic. So, we got about three hours sleep. So, we go there, get the plane, get up there. Drive, I don't know, I remember how many hours it, it wasn't was very long. It to was, get to know, Mount Chester. Maybe an hour, hour and a half. And it's beautiful. The mountain is right there, and it's snow covered, and it's beautiful. We got in the room, and I said, i got to get some sleep before we do the talk. I can't just keep going on raw energy. i got to have some rest. Mm-hmm. So I laid down to take a nap. <clears throat> I think I only was laying down a half hour, and we got a call that these people were there who wanted to do some filming. Now, we had heard before they might be there. So they said, we're here now. We want to come and do the filming in your room. And Julie was saying, yeah, but I was trying to get some rest. Well, like she said, this is the life of a rock star. Yeah, and you thought we had a glamorous life, didn't you? <laughs> A lot of people think, oh, you travel all these places, and it's so exciting. They don't know what it's all about. So I had to get up and try to put myself together enough to do the filming, which was an hour. Mm -hmm. After that, they wanted to do Blair, and there was no no use trying to go back to sleep because Mm -hmm. we was getting time for the lecture. Mm -hmm. So, But I felt I'd already given my lecture when I did the filming. So then, this is going to be a documentary somewhere down mm-hmm. the road. I never know where these things show up. I just well, that was for should we say who was that was doing it? I mean, yeah. this, it'll be on their site. Yeah, go it ahead. It was Conscious Media Network, and so they were filming, and they'll, they'll have it on their site. So, okay. Mm-hmm. So if you see me looking a little tired, you'll know why. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I felt like I had already given my lecture, so I didn't get any rest, and we had to get over to the hall and start the regular lectures, and I really felt like I was completely drained, but, you know, with me, it's like you push a button, and you go on automatic play, and it all comes Mm -hmm. out, Mm -hmm. so we did that, and Blair did his, and they filmed him, so that may be on the Conscious Media Network also. Yes, it will be. Mm -hmm. They filmed his talk there. Mm Mm-hmm. So then we got to get some sleep because we were going to have about three hours sleep again to start out to get back to Reading, to get the plane, to get back to LAX, to go on the next trip. So <laughs> we're driving in the dark most of this all these trips. Oh, but Blair did a great job. <laughs> now here we have this man from New Zealand. They drive on the other side of the road in New Zealand. So here he is. And he's the one driving. He loves to drive. He had conquered the L.A. freeway, so and he was loving it. So I let him drive, and he did a great job. <laughs> he got confused a few times. Just but once. Just once. Uh-huh. So anyway, we get back, had to take, go to Reading, get the plane back to LAX, get the plane there to go on to Phoenix, because the next uh, leg of the trip is Sedona. Mm-hmm. And so we get to Phoenix. We have to rent a car to drive to Sedona. You see, all of this takes a lot of time. So, I mean, if you think it's glamorous, you're sitting on planes, you're in, in cars, you don't get any sleep, 
So we arrived in Sedona. The first thing I wanted to do was take a nap anyway. At least we were okay. We didn't have to lecture till the next day. Mm-hmm. But Sedona is another wonderful place. With the, it's, it's a vortex. And here again, Julie and Blair felt something oh, there. We were, as we were coming in, remember we had to stop the car. We weren't even in Sedona yet. And it was just like we had to stop. We red, had to get out. The rocks began yeah. to appear. Oh, it was just they, they were just, oh, they talk. They talk. <laughs> Those rocks talk. <laughs> so. And he felt it too. Oh, my was, goodness, yeah, yeah. With something very definitely happening, mm-hmm. yeah. There, so uh, they, they were feeling energy now in two places. But you know, a lot of people that go into Sedona say they feel energy. But now Mount Chesta is supposed to be a vortex there. But Blair said when we were in Mount Chesta, it's a beautiful mountain. But he said he felt the energy was dormant. Yeah, I didn't feel anything. And then when I told him, I said, somebody, I didn't feel anything. He said he felt like it was dormant. So I don't know what, what you know, I don't know if we need to be in a different place. Maybe we need to be closer to the mountain. I don't know. But where we were, we weren't feeling anything, whatever that means. Yeah. Because yeah, so. it was supposed to be a very powerful place mm-hmm. anyway. Right. But in Sedona, they felt tremendous oh, wow. energy. Yep. <laughs> and it was, but it was different. It was different from the Ojai energy. Each one of these was different, but it was still very powerful. I mean, it was the most powerful. It was just, but it was different than Ojai. So here Blair gets a taste of what the desert is like, 110 degrees in Phoenix. And even in Sedona, it was hot. It was 100, I think, in Yeah, Sedona. so mm-hmm. we're getting a taste of a lot of different parts of the United mm-hmm. States. Right. So anyway, while we were in Sedona, we had a couple of days there that he was doing private sessions. So one of those days, we were so close to the Grand Canyon, we decided to go mm-hmm. up there. I've never been there. Julia had been there one time, and she thought twice. Twice. Mm-hmm. And that Blair would really enjoy seeing a oh, real yeah. landmark. Well, you can't be that close and not go. Uh-huh. I mean, you have to go. That's <laughs> just the way it is. <laughs> and I'd never seen it, even though we'd been close before. So she thought it would be interesting for him to see that. So we took the rental car we had, and we drove to the Grand Canyon. And it was amazing, too. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And yeah. they, did a, there too. <laughs> they did a lot of things that I didn't do because I don't <laughs> like to get out and walk that far. Uh, I don't know. Something about I, he may be like that normally. I don't know. But um, I was a little bit more adventurous. With, I think with somebody else's with you, you, you'll do some things that you might not do normally. And well, so, uh, <laughs> one thing with the Grand Canyon, oh, they don't have any fences or anything. You get off the road, and right there is the mm-hmm. edge of the canyon, and it drops all the yeah. way down. Yeah, you're a big person with a brain in your head. You you know that you're not to take that other step, so you know what you're doing. <laughs> that was They had signs around that said, not very many people fall off the edge, but if you do, you will not survive which makes sense. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but you, uh, they went on by their own. I went back to the visitor center because it was hot, too. It was hot. Mm-hmm. And you said you went out. He went out on these points that were sticking oh, yeah. out yeah. into the canyon. Uh-huh. Yeah, we went out on those rocks. And he went out on some of them. He went further than I did. But, uh, uh-huh. yeah, we just, just to do it. <laughs> well, tell him what you said he saw. He was picking up. Yeah. He's looking out at the canyon. Right. He was, he kept picking up, uh, well, there were several in there. It looked like what what could be pyramids it, within the canyon. It's like these points part, in there. and part of uh, the rock formation. Right. They look like pyramids. And then you'd see caves, you know, in there along the sides and things, uh, at several of these. Well, he was looking, and he was seeing craft. He was seeing craft. Uh, first he saw this one big one that was a, a long cylindrical-shaped one. And um, he was seeing a lot of little ships, and he was seeing stuff going into those mountains and stuff. He was just seeing them. And then he said, there's something underneath. There's like a whole base in there, or lab- laboratories. That's what he called it, laboratories. He was and picking all this up. All of this stuff, yeah. He was picking up all this. Well, what what it was getting is he was seeing that other dimension. And then as he was doing that, and I'm trying to look with my heart again, remember, look with the heart. So I'm looking. I wasn't seeing stuff. I was feeling, and what was coming to me was... Because here's all these people along the edge, and they're just doing all their stuff and looking and, and, you know, down in the canyon and doing all this. And what was coming to me was, here, we're doing all of this stuff, and these people don't have a clue, (laughs) you know. Uh, All of this is happening at the same 
point at the same time, and they don't know it. You, you know? mean another dimension? Another it's dimension. All yes. happening. And yeah, all the stuff he was seeing, I couldn't see it, but I could feel that something was happening. I, I could feel stuff. I could feel that this is happening, and this is happening, and these people don't know a single thing. They they have no idea. Well, that's going on all the time anyway. I mean, that's yeah, way the always person is. hasn't got an idea right. what's really going on. Right, but this way, I was able to focus on it. I, I was I was consciously noticing that here's a whole other world happening that he was seeing, and these people, I mean, I was just, I was really paying attention to that to see, does anybody get anything? And they're just over there laughing and doing all their stuff and... Taking pictures. Yeah, of- and not, not at all. Nobody had a clue. You know, we were the only ones, I think, looking <laughs> into for this other stuff. Uh-huh. <laughs> so, uh, but... But yeah. it was, it's neat that he can mm-hmm. see into these other dimensions. Right. So anyway, we had another successful talks there. Mm-hmm. Each, oh, each place we've had good crowds. Yes. Mm-hmm. And see, we, what we wanted to do was introduce Blair to America. When I went to New Zealand 10 years ago, he introduced me to New Zealand. Mm-hmm. So the idea has been to let America find out about this man because he is absolutely fantastic. And it's time more people knew about it. Right. Mm-hmm. And, oh, they loved him. Mm-hmm. Everywhere Absolutely. we went, they loved yeah. him. Yeah. So that was the idea. It was not so much for me. I didn't feel. but Well, I... it was for you. It was a matter of us. We were, we were uh, to use a marketing term, we were working areas. We were trying to see what areas that we want to, you know, where do we want to do more things at and stuff like develop, that, you know, and develop. Do... Yeah. And so we were, that's why we were doing things in areas that we hadn't necessarily done before. Um, that so it was for you as well. It was it was for all of it. It was just, just working this whole awakening tour. So yeah, it's like we said to awaken because you right. know let people know the veil is setting and mm-hmm. it's time to move on. Right. And that was what we were focusing on. But I really wanted people to get to know Blair because uh, they really see we got a real jewel here. Absolutely. And I know people are going to know more about him because mm-hmm. uh, they are wanting to promote him. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Hay House is probably going to pick him up and and work with him and and you know, so he's going to be a big name. So you heard him here first, though, right? <laughs> so uh, probably not. No, you heard him in New Zealand first. <laughs> so, uh, okay. But uh, but that's the idea is to let people know about him, and you will be hearing more about him. Absolutely. And he's gone back now. Yeah, he's back home. He was ready to go two months. Mm-hmm. So anyway, here we leave Sedona then. And we take Well, but on the that was where he had his experience the last morning okay. before we left. He was out because here we are out in the middle of the night. It's like 4 o'clock in the morning we again. we got to leave early to, to get to the airport. Right, and so he went out across from the hotel, and he's kind of communing with them, and it's like, you know, okay, you know, if it's whatever, let me know you're here and stuff. And that's when he saw the bright flash of light like what you saw in um, Washington. Yeah. So he saw that kind of a thing, and I think he got a message too. But, but I thought that was interesting that he saw that same type of thing. Then I went. I was like, oh, I'm going to go commune, and all I got was not yet. You'll when you're ready, and I'm like, I'm getting tired of that being the answer. <laughs> uh, when you're ready, you think you're ready. You I do, be. you know. I'm like, I I want to see it eventually. Well, when you're ready, and I want it when you're ready. <laughs> like, okay, fine. See, yeah, I'm <laughs> so, ready. I think. Well, when I'm ready, it'll all happen. So. Okay. So anyway, then we had to get the car. Well, back. they could tell me that was for Blair too. See what what happened? They, they they specifically said they said we love you, but that was for Blair. Okay. Just like your flash was for you. Those were things that were needed at those points, you know. But I could hear them say we love you. Okay. But we're not going to show ourselves to you right now. All right. <laughs> you know? Okay. So. so anyway, now I didn't do any sessions on this trip. There wasn't time. There was hardly time to. To, uh, <laughs> I said I didn't get any sleep for days. We're both functioning on three hours of sleep, mm-hmm. and then the driving and everything. And uh, no, there's no way I could see clients. And people kept saying, "Well, why not? You got time to work me in, don't you?" Oh yeah. <laughs> Between running, getting the car to the next place. Right. So anyway, then we had to get the car back to Phoenix and take the the plane to Dallas. Mm-hmm. where we met up with Julia's daughter, Tiffany, who lives there in Dallas. Right. And um, 
we had a lecture there. Mm -hmm. And that was a really good one, too. Yes, yes it was. So, uh, And we got to the, the, the treat that you had, you and Blair had, was we had a dinner at the Reunion Tower. That was a revolving restaurant downtown, so that way they could see Dallas. Uh -huh. So we <laughs> so, were showing him a lot of yeah. America. Yeah. But all he uh -huh. could see was these cities are too big. Uh -huh. Well, and that ended up being a very profound experience because I forgot that the JFK Memorial was sitting just down at the base of the tower. And when we were going around, he saw it, and it was like, oh, yeah, that happened here. And he's like, oh, we have to go see it. So the next day, that's what we did is we took a, a little That's uh, where the, trip assass down the assassination there. took place, right at the base of the tower. Yes, yes. And there we had some more profound things happen. I mean, this was really a, a, a very good trip for um, – um, energy and, and profound things happening. Well, it's supposed <laughs> so, to be the awakening. Tour, that's right. Anyway. Well, we were awakening along with everybody else. <laughs> so so um, they went there to see, they have a museum there now. You mm -hmm. said the the book building. Yes. Where the, it's uh, a where, museum. Where, mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, right where, it ha where, the, where Oswald, Oswald um, shot from. Right. That is now a museum. Yes. So you said they went in there and you got to Tell them what happened with that trip. Well, uh, on that one, we were just, because we, we, we knew roughly where it was based on what we saw from the tower. So it's like, okay, we got back down there, and we're walking in that direction of what we saw. And we got there, and it's like the memorial wasn't to JFK. All these things weren't, it was something else. And it was like, well, where was it then? Or it should be here someplace. Well, then all of a sudden we saw this little plaque. And that had JFK assassination and everything. And so we're standing there reading it, and then this man came up, He's probably the local self-appointed tour guide, and um, he started telling, he just started talking about all this stuff, and we were trying to blow him off, but he was persistent, and I'm actually glad he was, because he told us things that we never would have gotten otherwise. Couldn't we museum or anything? No, uh-uh. We wouldn't have put the pieces together. We were just standing up. We wouldn't even have known the museum was there, but he's, he told us. You know, it does, they don't have big signs or anything, and... Um, but he was pointing out things, and then on the street where the the the, the arcade, motorcade. the motorcade was at, there's two X's, and I didn't even notice them until he was talking about it. And oh, I got chills just then when I was doing you it. You said oh. you went over to one. Before well, you did I, I'll, I'm building up to that. Okay, okay, all right. Anyway, he was talking about okay, one X is where the first shot hit him, and then the second X is where the second shot, you know, the fatal shot. And and then there was, a, you know, it's like all the pieces and parts, you know, and the grassy knoll and the fence and the everything. And then he was like, okay, here's where Oswald shot from. And as you can see, there's no way that, I mean, that can do this one, but it couldn't have done this shot. I mean, it was all that information. And so, and then he's like, and you need to go visit that museum. So, so then we just started walking down the street where the motorcade had gone, and we're just walking along, not paying attention to anything out there. We're just walking, actually kind of walking toward where that fence in the grassy knoll is. All of a sudden, I got this wave of of a sickening energy, and it was just like, I'm just going, oh, my God. And he, he goes, oh, my God, yeah, I felt something. And then I happened to look, and we were standing right next to the first X. And I'm like, oh, my, oh, my. <laughs> so, That's uh, what it is. Absolutely. And then we walked on to the second X, and I don't know if I was, I felt like I was picking up the emotions of the man that shot from behind that fence. And what, what bothered me was it was not, I, was, I would have expected anger or hate or something like that. It was excited. It was, um, it was excited. And that, that was very confusing to me because I'm, I'm feeling, and, and I don't know, maybe also I was feeling uh, the emotions from the whole area. I don't know. But I was just like, it was really confusing, the energies. And I was like, I have to cut this. I don't usually get like that where I have to cut the energy. I can't, it's too much for me. Yeah. And um, so I was like, we really need to move in a different place. So then Blair walked up to the fence where the man would have been standing right there, you know, at that fence. And he walked up, and, I mean, I'm just, it's all this weird energy I could feel. And he got there, and he's like, wow. It's complete peace right here. Hmm. And then so I stood up. I got closer to there, and it was. It wasn't any of the other stuff. And what I got intuitively was, well, this was the part of the contract. This, So it was peace. Those two made peace with each other because they had an agreement to do this, to play this game or whatever, this role, you know, and that was done. 
you know, where I was picking up all that other stuff before, but it was this peace. A peace was made between them, hmm. okay? So, and that was, like, what, I, what was important to know. Anyway, then after Oswald, that, Kennedy, and all of them, or what? Kennedy and whoever the second shooter was. Oswald, I don't I, I don't know. I wasn't okay. necessarily tapping in there, but this, this is the one that killed him, was the one behind the fence. Okay. Okay. And that, there was peace. It was total peace. It was just, it was strange. Um, but, you know, uh, we just uh, printed my first book, finally, this last year, that I sat on for 40 years mm-hmm. of the, everything when he started out in the 1960s. And the experiments we were doing then with hypnosis, we didn't have any idea what we were doing at that time because nobody did this kind of thing. And in the book, it talks about one of the experiments we tried was to have uh, the woman look at the Kennedy assassination right. mm-hmm. and without telling her what we were going to have her see. And you remember this was in 68, which was only a few years right. after the assassination. They'd already had the Warren Commission where they'd come to the conclusion of what had happened and everybody was accepting it, even mm-hmm. though I didn't think it was right. And they had already sealed all of the records and files and everything to be opened in, I don't know. In the 80s. It said in the museum they were sealed for like 20 years, yeah. which didn't make any sense. <laughs> and they said they would not be opened or revealed in either records or any of the investigations or anything. So anyway, when we were doing the session with this woman, uh, we asked her to look at Dallas and see what was happening. And she, without even telling her what to go, she saw the the motorcade, she saw the the car, she mm-hmm. saw the entire thing. And it was very amazing because we had other people watching this in the room. And she said, oh, he's caught in a crossfire. Mm-hmm. And we said, what? We had, nobody had ever even thought of a crossfire before. But they all said Oswald was the right. only shooter. And then she went on to describe a grassy knoll and a fence, and there was a, some people mm-hmm. behind the fence, and they mm-hmm. were the ones doing the shooting. And this was all totally new information in those days because nobody had ever heard any of it. And it's all in the book. The book is Five Lives Remembered, mm-hmm. the whole thing that we found out. But then remember, in those days, this was totally yeah. new. Yeah. But now you found out, now they're oh, yeah. accepting there was another shooter. Well, they, they said, I mean, in the museum it says that they, several people kept saying there's something from that, that fence, from that grassy knoll. They were running to that grassy knoll. That's where they were hearing stuff from. And they went and checked it out, but there was nobody there. But there was a train running constantly behind that fence. So that was going to be nothing for that person to get out of there. Yeah. But, um but they, we, but yeah, they they are accepting that they they decide later that there was more more happened. Yeah, yes. because mm-hmm. but we had a great deal of information about what happened that day, and of course I sat on it all these years, and I thought, well, maybe it's not too old. We could bring it out now, right? Because over the years now they've had lots of movies and documentaries about it. More information has come forth, but we did know it in '68. Mm-hmm. This was what happened, right? So anyway, that was Dallas. Everywhere we've gone, we've had adventures. Right. And so we come back from Dallas. The weary travelers come in here. We're only home a few days. We have to go all the way back to Ojai for our class. It was calling. <laughs> <laughs> and the energy was still there. <laughs> but this time, Blair, had he left us in Dallas. Yeah, he was, yeah, he was he there. He went mm-hmm. back to L.A. Mm-hmm. and then headed back for New Zealand. Mm-hmm. And we had to come home and just turn around again in a couple of days to go back to Ohio for our class. It was a really good class. Yes, it was fantastic. Yes. We had a lot of people, and we had a lot of very important things that happened at that class also. Yes. Mm-hmm. Uh, oh, one thing, one of the students was somebody I'd done a session with, and I didn't even remember. All I know, I do so many people that I just thought, well, she looks familiar. She said, well, it was just last month in <laughs> June, and I said, yeah, but I've been all over the country since then. Well, she wanted to tell the class what had happened in her session, and she had been scheduled for surgery on her neck. She was in a lot of pain, and the 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 vertebrae in the neck had uh, they were they were they were fused, or they were going to they were going to operate on her neck. Mm-hmm. And she, of course, she didn't want that done, and she was in a lot of pain. So in the session, we came out that she was hung, 
And when she was hung, it broke her neck. Yeah, and we're talking about in another life. Not in this yeah. life. Another <laughs> life. Right. She went back to another life to where she was hung. And, of course, the people involved are in her life now. Mm-hmm. The man who had her hung was her husband now and all of that. So that was why the body was remembering these events. It does that. It carries back a residue from other lifetimes and it can cause physical problems in this lifetime. But anyway, she was telling everyone that after the session, it was completely gone. It was completely healed, and mm-hmm. she's had no problems since. Mm-hmm. And I said, did you go back to the doctor? Because she was scheduled for surgery. And she said, yeah, I went back, and I asked him, do you want to take some more x-rays and things? And he said, no, as long as you're not hurting, if you're not in pain, let's leave it alone. Good for him. Yeah, at least yeah. they don't want to start cutting. A right. lot of them want to do that. hmm so that was an interesting side note. Right. And there was a lot of other things that happened in her session. So it's always good when I get feedback. I've done so many people, and I never really hear on all of them. No, so you hear on some, but not, not Some of them. It can be a year or more later, mm-hmm. and they said, oh, yeah, I never forgot to tell you what happened. Right. And then we mm-hmm. get the news, yeah, we know there was a lot of things that happened. And the woman we had the demonstration on in this class, it was fantastic. She right. was totally healed, too, mm-hmm. with curvature of the back, and yeah. she was in a lot of pain. And uh, she'd had a whole lot of things done to her. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. it's amazing to have these things happen. Now, so the class said, I do show, I play demo demonstration tapes for the class of showing other uh, sessions we've had when there were healings mm-hmm. done. Mm-hmm. But they said, yeah, it's, an, it's one thing to hear the tape, but another thing to watch it being done. Right, and, it's in you, and you relay a lot of this in the books, too. You'll talk about it, and, and you'll hear, you know, in the books you'll see how the subconscious talks. You'll, you'll hear it on these tapes, how it talks. But then when you actually see it and experience it, you're still going, oh, my God, wow. <laughs> you know? So it just, it just blows you away. That's what you they know? said. They said it was the most fantastic thing they'd ever seen. Mm-hmm. And the woman, it she was completely turned around altogether. Mm-hmm. Afterwards, uh, when she was talking to everybody, she got down on the floor, was mm-hmm. kneeling on the floor, and she said she couldn't hadn't been right. able to do that in years. Right. Mm-hmm. She used to do yoga postures, and she hadn't been able to do any of it. So no pain at all. Everything right. was gone. And that really makes me feel good when I can see that happen, and the person has helped so much. Mm-hmm. Right. But while we're on that, we are having one more class. One more in the United States. One more mm-hmm. in the United States, this and that's year. next mm-hmm. week. Right. Uh, it's going to be here in Arkansas. One more class. We'll have more next year. We're only right. trying to mm-hmm. figure out where to have those. Mm-hmm. And then the end of August, we go to London, right. have a class there, and then one in the south of France. Yes. Mm-hmm. And that's going to be interesting because I'm going to be in Nostradamus territory. Yeah, we'll get a picture of her in front of his house. I said, so. if I'm going to be that close, I'm going to go see. Mm-hmm. They have a museum there. Right. So I'll have more to talk about when I get from there. But if anybody's overseas, okay, yeah. anybody's overseas, we will be in London and uh, Paris mm-hmm. in the south right. of France. In September. Mm-hmm. And then to be more later on. Okay, is somebody there? Yes. Hi, Dolores. Hi, Julia. Hi. I hope you guys are yeah. well, and um, thank you for everything. You've really changed my life in your own way. But I want to be really quick with my question. Um, okay. Uh, uh, I've been interested in, like, the messages from the Rielian movement, and I wanted to know if you had any experience uh, in, uh, like, what they had to say and if you saw any parallels in what you've been learning over the years. Um well, that movement has been around for a very, very long time. Isn't it in Canada where they have their uh, headquarters? It's somewhere um, up where they, sure. they have this huge thing that they have built, that big buildings and supposed to be like a spaceship mm. a monument and everything. And they they really claim they've done a lot of stuff. They're the ones that said that they cloned a human, aren't they? Yeah, they're, I remember that. They're very controversial. They're very controversial, and it's hard to say, but they've been around for a very long time. And uh, I don't know, they're kind of on the, what do you want to call, um, 
uh, the side where they want attention. They want mm-hmm. uh, want people to know about them, and yeah. they they kind of go out of their way. They dress in robes, and they uh, they want people to know about them. So I just don't know. But if their information is valid, maybe it doesn't matter how they got it and how they're presenting it. But I don't know any more about them than that. I've never met them or been on any kind of a lecture with them. And I don't know anything about them, so, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no. well, I thought it was interesting because they talk about how they got messages from, um, the, I guess, the, as the founder of the movement, he learned about the um, from an alien being himself, and they told them that they were actually our creators, our designers, they always say in the yeah. media. And mm-hmm. that, um, you know, I knew that you had talked a lot about that just from what you'd learned through all your clients over the years. Um, and yeah, I've written, I've written a lot about the seeding of the planet Earth. But, you know, if, if their information is valid, I always tell people to look at this stuff and try to decide for yourself anyway. Yeah, yeah always put your discerning factor on and, and just, you yeah. know, decide for yourself. If it sounds good for you, then it's truth for you. So yeah, I don't have any idea what they say, so I can't. But the main the main thing is make sure they're not a cult. Because you don't oh, want to yeah. get involved in anything like that, you know. Okay, but that's all I know. I'm sorry. I don't know much more than probably that you know, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much, ladies. Okay. Thank you. All right. So, um, anyway, we do have those two classes, mm-hmm. one in mm-hmm. Arkansas next week and the two in Europe in um uh, mm-hmm. In the end of this month and the beginning of September. If anybody wants to sign up for these, you can contact our website, and uh, there's still room. Right. The one in London is growing, but yeah. there is still room anyway. Mm-hmm. Okay. So if you want to contact and find out about the classes or about our schedule, our website is www.ozarkmountain.com. And it's abbreviated, O-Z-A-R-K-M-T dot com, or O-Z-A-R-K-M-T dot com. Or you said they can also just type in my name. Yes, DoloresCannon dot com. Either spelling will get you there. So. You can get into our site and find out more about the classes if you're interested then. Mm-hmm. Okay, now you said you had yes. something you want to. Yes. You don't want to let that no, slide. No, no, and I'm constantly being reminded, so uh, it's something that really needs to be said. Um, that you got from oh, Blair's from, lecture. Yes, yes, from Tabash. Um, and it was something he said at least three of the talks. He said it. It may have been four of them. Um, but like I said, it took several times before it finally got through. So if you don't get it on this time, that's okay. Just think about it. And it may be some more times that you have to hear it because it really is a concept that would be new to us. And remember, we have to hear a new concept at least three times before our brain will grasp onto it. I was going to say, you yes. said that before. You don't get it the first right. time. Right. And that's why I had to hear it several times. Um, I could go into all of how it led up to it, but I think I'll just go into what it was. Okay. Uh, it's, it's in your reality. Remember, all these realities, it's like everything, every possibility. You know how you're always talking about all the possibilities because probabilities, every, probabilities and possibilities, they're all happening. Okay, now we, we pull the thing in a simultaneous time. They're all happening now. All of the, every possible thing that, you know, option or outlay that could happen in your situation is already happening. So you have all these different ones sitting there. You know, every time you think about, okay, I wonder if I want to go this way or this way. Well, both of them happen, yeah. right? And then it's whichever one you choose to focus on is the one that's your reality. But the other one is real also. Exactly. But we don't know about it because it's not in our focus We're right not here. focusing on it. So what do you do to make it your reality? You change your focus. You just shift your your tuning dial to that one. You know, I'm, I'm looking at this one right now because that's where my tuner is, is dialed to. Well, how about I choose to now be in this reality? I now choose, I mean, this was, when I got it, it's like, okay, well, this is what I want in my life. It's not like, oh, I have to go out and create it. It's already created. That was the part that you have to understand. It's already created because if you have the desire, you just created it. So it's already created. It's already there as a there. possibility. Exactly. It's already there as a possibility. So now it's like, okay, 
that's the reality I choose to focus on. And by choosing to focus on it, you have now turned your dial to that. And now that's your reality. And that's what will happen. And I did that. I'm not going to go into details, but I did that. I was just practicing it. I said, you know, I choose this one. And by God, by that afternoon, it was starting to happen. I'm going, oh, my God. <laughs> you know? It's that easy. It is that easy and it's that fast. It, but it's just a matter of you just choose. Now, at any point, if you have something over here going, oh, pulling you back to this other dial, it may pull you back. But that's where you have to kind of train the brain again. Remember, we're always training our consciousness of how to think. And, okay, I want to be positive. I want to, whatever, all the things, you, you know, you want to train. Well, now... Train the brain where you want to focus. And that when I understood it's already there, oh, it's nothing I have to do to create it. I just have to do to focus on it. That's my only doing. But of course, some people don't know what they want. That's, then... that's the fun of it. It's all there. Now, what is it you want? Because any of it is yours. Any of it. Now, didn't that just open things up hugely? I mean, that busts. Everything out there's no limitations. There's no that's when they're always telling you there's no limitations. That's why, because of this, you can have anything because it's all out there just for your choosing to change your focus. Isn't that huge? That is big. It's it's gargantuan huge. <laughs> and when I when I, like I said when it made when I got it, and then when I did it and it worked, that's when it was going. Oh, you know, yes, 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 this is the secret. <laughs> well, that was part of what Blair was saying. You know, Tabash was saying, yes, I choose this. That's, that's what I'm saying. That was his message. That was what he was saying. If you that's, don't like your life, if yes. there's things not right yes. in your life, yes. you want something different, you just say, I choose. I choose this. Yeah, and when you do that, you're shifting your focus to that reality. When you say, I choose. I choose the reality that this is happening in, and it does. It just moves, and then you just can keep saying it until you're you're firmly in there. You and know, it doesn't because go for, for a while you can you can waft back and forth, but you lock you know you get yourself in there. It's not a big deal. Don't make it complicated, people. Don't make it complicated. It's just a matter of shifting your focus. I choose this one. And it doesn't go against anyone else's free will or anything. Absolutely. And and this is reminding. I'm reminded of a phone call that came in this morning. I haven't discussed it with anybody. It it, it kind of it disturbed me. Um, and I've been at questioning why it came, why it came into my reality. Because and it may have been just to show me. I don't know because it felt so far from another world that I. I mean, it wasn't from my world. And then maybe that's what it was trying to show me. That um, you have changed or what? I don't know. I don't know. This person called and she was. She's. So entrenched in fear, so entrenched. I've not, I don't know if I, it's been a long time since I've heard somebody that scared. And she was talking about all the horrible things going on in the world, and how can there, how can God let this happen? All these horrible things, and and now all these people that say they're for the good, and they're all out there trying to kill all the animals, and these people are coming into our homes, and they're taking our animals and killing them. And I'm thinking. What world is this happening in? That's what I thought. I'm thinking, in what world? And that's what I'm thinking. It's not my world. Is this really some of this movement where it's splitting? Because I'm going, I don't know that world at all. I couldn't relate. And I'm trying. I was trying that's to. That's her like, world. And, and if I told her, I said, fear. that's your world. And as long as she's, I'm scared to death. They're going to do this to my animals. I said, and you're going to track that. She goes, I know, I know. She understands that. But it's like, and I was trying to talk to her about the choosing. You choose which one you want to live in, and that went way over her head, but at least it was a crumb dropped there. But but, it, but the part that I was looking at for myself was it felt so foreign. I mean, when she was talking about it, I'm thinking, in what world is this happening? It's not here. I'm not here. Nowhere. And, so, and please, if you hear that, don't don't call me and tell me what where it's happening. I don't want to know. It's not happening in my world. That's okay? not our world. Right. And I was telling her, look, these animals, they have more understanding of what's going on than we do. They come in with free will just like we do, and they know what's going on. So if they are in that world, they're they're trying to show you whatever about you your fear message. and stuff yeah. like that. But um, but anyway, this is right. it. We don't live in the no. world of fear. No, okay. and I'm always saying there's so many different worlds. That was really one. I am not in touch with that world whatsoever, and I have no desire to be. And that's what so. Blair Tavash was trying to say. Yes. You pick the world you want to live in. 
Yes. You this choose. all has to do you with the choose. Doer. And that's your wording. I choose this one. It's that simple. And and that's what they told me too. You know, I choose it's this or this. It's that simple. See, it's all the same stuff. It's all the same wording. I choose. Okay. That's our new mantra. Uh, I, I choose. <laughs> okay, well, we're coming down to the wire again. We're going to have to um, sign off tonight. And I won't be here next week because I do have the class in Arkansas. This is the time of the year when I'm on the road a lot, but I'll do live shows as much as I can. Right. Mm -hmm. All right, so I want to thank everyone for listening tonight, listening about our travels and all the strange things that keep happening to us. So good night, everyone, and thanks for listening. Good night. If you enjoyed the show, check out more of our other videos, and be sure to subscribe and click the like button. Thank you for listening to the Metaphysical Hour with Dolores Cannon.